Hello, and thank you for contacting Wave Support. I see from your clinical request you're struggling with lenses that are riding high on this patient, as well as uh, not providing adequate vision, mostly probably due to the fit. When you look at your topographies, I think the difficulty is um, probably as lower or super corny as you thought. I agree with that. And what's probably happening because it's a little steeper down here, you got this flatter superior quadrant, so those lenses are just kind of riding down the slope of the mountain, so to speak, and uh, lingering up at the top here. In regards to your initial uh, fitting adjustment, where you steepen up the superior cornea and hoping to gently push the lens downward, uh, here I, I agree with that. That's one way to try to do that. Unfortunately, it wasn't successful for you. So let's take a, take a look at these designs. Uh, actually, another comment on this topography. Uh, one of the things I try to do if I see an initial presenting topography like this, uh, I sort of have, uh, from uh, past experience, have realized that I usually run into fitting difficulties with it. So I try to get a little nicer, cleaner topography by getting the patient to stay out of their lenses for a few days. And I realize that it's quite often impossible to do, uh, but whenever I can, I try to, uh, you know, I'll even show the patient this little warping area, as I'll call it, uh, and ask them to stay out of their lenses maybe over the weekend, maybe Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then Monday morning on their way to work, come in without their contacts in, get a fresh, clean topography, maybe get a quick measurement of a known spherical RGP over the cornea, with a known base curve so I can adjust my over fractions using that trial lens data tool. I'll, I'll reference that in a moment. And then they can wear their contacts while I'm designing their lenses. Uh, now if that's not possible, uh, then we kind of have to work with what we have to work with. So look at your designs based on what you looked, uh, what you did here. Um, I like your design. It's, it's probably exactly what I would have done in a freeform design in this cornea since that uh, steep area is down below. So I think that looks great. Unfortunately, we're still getting that riding higher. So a couple things we can do. I know you wondered about switching over to RSIM. Uh, and if you realize, you know, as you know, going to an RSIM will probably flatten up those edges, get a little bit more uh, edge lift in a couple quadrants. That may help it to drop a little bit. Uh, what I might be inclined to do is actually just keep it in free form, but click over here to from axial over to tangential design. Tangential design tends to flatten up this periphery a little bit. You know, it's probably about a half diopter flatter. And uh, so if we do that, let the uh, wave do its uh, design here. Now you still got a nice freeform lens that's actually about a probably about a half diopter flatter all around, so that may help you out a little bit. Um, the other thing you can do is um, sometimes if you go to a put a little more asphericity out here in the peripheral part, you'll notice what happens at this base curve here. We'll kind of look at it. Um, now if you look at this, the back surface of this. Uh, contact lens compared to the back sur or the front surface of the topography. If we look if we flip over here, just put a little bit in there, you're going to notice that all of a sudden it looks very similar. I like to kind of let it run its uh, the design work again just to get it to, to match that. And uh, lo and behold, we've got a pretty almost perfect match to here. If it tells me it's, uh, it's matching pretty well, uh, I might even sometimes flatten this up a little bit more through here if I can. Uh, so now your lens, if you look, it's even flattened up a little bit more. So now you get a flatter fitting lens that's, uh, that still fits the topography very nicely. The diameter's uh, pretty go bigger if you can get away with it uh, based on your clinical impression. So it looks like you got a lot of room to work with. I can go a little larger and then maybe steepen or thicken up the central part of the lens uh, is about 0.19. So I at least go in like another half or so. Um, and that will give you a little extra uh, weight in that uh, center part of the lens. And hopefully those design adjustments will make this lens drop down a little bit more. If you're still struggling, you may need to go back and just uh, bite the bullet and have them try to stay out of their lenses for a couple of days to see if you can get a little bit nicer cornea. And that way you don't have this uh, you know, very precisely designed wave lens going over an imperfect cornea. So with that said, I think hopefully those, uh, in a, in a of course, the same suit will apply in the other eye. I mentioned the trial lens tool in case you haven't seen that yet or used it. Uh, quite often, I'd like to take a lens of known spherical quantity when I'm uh, getting my initial measurements. I'll take a, a base curve. I'll put a base curve with a sphere on there and just get an over refraction over that because uh, that way you've got nice clean data. And then uh, you could add it right in here, and that helps you fine-tune that uh, final uh, power on your initial lens. So it takes you from point A to point B a little bit faster, and sometimes that helps eliminate some of those uh, weird spherical over-refractions. It looks like your numbers are pretty good on this patient as far as your, you had very minimal over-refraction on your uh, 
lends it. So that may not really uh, be necessary in this case, but it's a helpful tool to know about. So with those uh, adjustments, hopefully that'll get you fitting uh, more nicely on this patient. Uh, as you know, these can be a bit of a challenge, especially when you try to get a multifocal in, into play there. But uh, wish you well with this case, and uh, thanks for contacting Wade Support. Have a great day.